Hey, welcome back. I'm TJ. We're talking about the M1, specifically SFHSS, and not really the version. So this is the SFHSS version of the M1 helicopter. If you don't know what the M1 is, and this is your first video that you're seeing my face, check out the description. The M1 is a tiny collector pitch helicopter. It came out a few months back. It is extremely popular. So watch the review video. You can do some searches on it. There's a lot of information out there. And actually this is technically my first video setting up the M1. However, there's a reason for that. The M2 videos that we have that set up on Spectrum, that set up on OpenTX with the OMP protocol and with SFHSS, all of those setup videos work for the M1. Like quite literally, if you set that up, you copy everything exactly, you bind it to the M1, it's going to work perfectly. The biggest difference with this video here is we sat down with Jonas from MacURC, and if you don't know what I'm talking about on that either, links in the description as well. Jonas is a very, very smart guy. I've learned a ton off of him. And with this setup specifically, you know, there's a 30 minute video that we go over every single detail of this setup. So it's really worth the watch. But a few key features with the OMP M2 and M1, around center stick, it's a little bit, I don't wanna say mushy, but there is a dead band there and there's a reason for it. However, you know, in, in Jonas's setup, he compensated for that and actually removed it. So you have a really, really precise, crispy feel now using this setup. Another key feature is the rescue mode that he has. He has it on a switch. It's on the momentary switch up here. When you hold that, it if you I mean, you can be inverted. There's literally a video of him being inverted about two feet off the ground. He pulls the switch. It goes neutral pitch. It rolls the helicopter over and then it goes positive, positive pitch and the helicopter just rises out of the way. And that's the entire time you're holding that switch. So if you just click the switch, it's not really gonna do anything. You have to hold it. So that's, you know, you pull the switch it writes the helicopter, it takes off. You breathe a little bit, get your sticks where you need them, you know, center stick again, a little bit of positive pitch maybe, release it and then take control of the helicopter again. So it, it's a little bit different. It's not just turning on the stabilization feature and hoping the helicopter goes, there, there's some work put into that. I'll try not to ramble on too much. We're gonna dive into this. I've got a camera up here so you can see the screen of the transmitter as we walk through this. Most of it's gonna be in the computer. So, you know, download the file. The model file is in the description. Download that and we'll get started. All right, I've already got OpenTX open on my computer. And right before we get started, I wanna go into settings and radio profile. So I've already got one set up here, but just in case this is your first time ever doing this, we wanna click add radio profile. And then it's as simple as right here beside radio type, we're gonna find Radio Master TX16S, click that and then just hit okay. We're gonna go ahead and plug in our TX16S and with that, it's the USB-C plugs into the top. So plug it in, it's gonna pop up and say joystick or USB storage, click USB storage. And then we're gonna get a couple pop-ups here on our computer. We can just close these because they're not important for what we're doing right now. So then once our transmitter's hooked up, everything looks solid. Over here on the left, get this little read models and settings from radio, click that. It's gonna pop up and these are all the, well, models that are on my transmitter right now. While we are in this point, I wanna save this just in case something happens and I accidentally overwrite everything. So we'll come up to file we're going to click save as and then i've got a tj model file here we can just click save and yeah i want to replace it so now i've got my most up-to-date models saved on my computer so if anything happens we can literally just fix that so up here we'll click open we're going to find the model file that we just downloaded so i've got it on the desktop double click it and it opens up in a second window it's as simple as clicking the model file dragging it over to our well, model files, highlighting models, let it go. You see it lines up down here on the bottom. Just close out the second window. With this setting here, we're gonna save that. So all it does is it overwrites the one that's already on the computer. Now to get it on the transmitter, we're gonna click this little red button here that says write models and settings. It takes a split second and it's done. Come up and click the red X to close. That closes out, we can unplug our transmitter. No need to reboot anything, it's already on the transmitter. So you can hold down our scroll wheel here on the right, go to model select, you see our OMP M1 Jonas, hold down on that and click select model. Now there's one thing that I do change, so I like seeing 
all of my inputs. So anything that moves, I like to be able to see that. So I do go in here and hit TLE, come over to setup widgets. I only want, so from, for my purposes, I do the, the two screens. I click that, click return, go to setup widgets. On the left here, I scroll over until I find timer one. So it highlights it, hit return, highlight the right screen, and then I wanna find this screen here that has all of the outputs. Click it, we're gonna drop down one and hit fill background, and you can change it to whatever. But this way, I can see literally everything that's happening on my transmitter. So right now, you can see channel six, that's our collective, so that's our pitch. You got channel one, channel two, channel four, Channel three is not moving because we have throttle hold on right now. And that's a combination of two switches. And it's actually, if you can see it here, so it's our SA switch and then our SF switch up here. What that is, is he has kind of, if you're in the drones like me, it's, it's kind of like a pre-arm and an arm. If both of these switches are activated, then the blades will turn on the helicopter. If one of these switches are deactivated, it won't turn. So it's kind of like a safety switch, right? And then, if you go and watch the other video, there's timestamps in that again that you can go to find you know, exactly where he talks about the timer and it breaks it down. So SA and SF, if we switch those both away from us, now the helicopter would arm. If we pull one down, it doesn't matter which one, the timer stops. So if you land for some reason and you, dis, you, know, you disarm one of these switches, the timer stops, battery's still plugged in to reset your timer, you gotta disable both switches. Now up here on the top, right here, the SE switch, that is our flight modes. And the easiest way to determine that is, let's go ahead and arm the helicopter. So SA and SF pushed away from us. SE, if we push it all the way away, you can see channel three, our throttle, is set to negative 10. Put it in the middle, we have positive 20. Pull it towards us, positive 45. If you want to know what that means, again, you can watch the other video, click the description, go down to actually where it talks about this, and it explains what that actually means. I mean, all the way down to revolutions per minute. Like, it's there's a lot of information there. So we've talked about flight modes, we've talked about arm and disarm, and that's pretty much it. Now, the one thing about this is, yeah, there's no what is, you know, kind of become known as normal mode where you know zero throttle as in all the way down lands the helicopter all the way up flies to the moon it's all only collective pitch and you know again we explained in the other video this is actually a really good way you know get on a simulator to learn orientations and stuff but this is more of an advanced or a semi-advanced setup and you can see from how Jonas flies, it is very, 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 very capable. If you're learning like me, you know, I took this outside, flew it around a little bit. What I love about it is the rescue mode. And the way that works is you can see right here on the screen, let's go ahead and arm it. So you can see right here on the screen, you know, channel six is gone. All of our inputs are working. I've got it on the high flight mode. So, you know, 45 on channel three. If I got in trouble, our SA, our SH switch right here. If we pull that, you can see what it does in our outputs here. So if we pull SH, you can see channel six goes from positive 23 right now, or let's just say that we're, we're negative. So we're inverted. So negative 60% right now, we're, we're hovering inverted. You pull the rescue, you go watch channel six go zero for a split second and then goes positive 70. And then you can also see channel five flips. What's that do? Well, channel five is your stabilization. So it activates the gyro, or well, act activates stabilization, while at the same time it goes zero pitch on your blades, so completely flat, and then it inputs positive 70. So what, what that's gonna do, again, you can watch the other video for a full explanation, but instead of just activating your stabilization and hoping that everything works out right, it gives it a split second to flip over before it inputs any kind of collective. So while you're holding that, it's gonna keep rising. Use that time to center your sticks, to breathe, to get you know your bearings about you, and then release the switch, 
and take back over control of the helicopter. Once that's done, now we need to bind it. So in order to bind it, we're gonna hold our MDL button up here on the top right. We gotta get out of our widget menu. So just hit return a few times. It takes us back to our main menu. Let's go ahead and reset our timer, pull both SA and SF towards us, hold our MDL button, and then we're gonna scroll to where we see bind. So with it being saying bind, we plug our helicopter in. Now, no matter which helicopter you have, we have the SFHSS version here with us. If you have the OMP protocol with our SFHSS external receiver, it's gonna work the same way. You plug it in and then on the top, so let's see if you can see it here in the other camera. So on the top, especially on this one, we have a bind button. So with it plugged in, come over, we'll hold the bind button down for just a minute. See it start flashing? I don't know if you can see that or not. So we got quick flashes. Come over, click bind. Takes just a second. Binds immediately, hit return. And then we can check and make sure all of our functions are working. And they do, I've tested this extensively. So if you follow this video, start to finish, it's gonna work just fine. You notice, I don't have any blades on my helicopter. By moving, woo. So you can tell that that's why we don't have props on. My, my throttle cut switch was not cut, so. If we had props on, we would have been cut. <laughs> very, very, very big point. Remove your blades. It takes just a minute. And while we're setting stuff up like this, if for some reason we had our arm switches armed, this is not going to hurt us. We're fine right now. But it does sound kind of funny like this. So we can disarm it. Everything's working great. Now it's time to just put it back together and we can go fly ton of snow outside so i'm actually not going to fly but you can so hope you learned something again if any of this didn't make sense there's some context that may be missing jump over check out jonas he does such a good job explaining this there's flight videos in the description of him using this actual setup there's you know accuracy videos that we've done before there, there's so much stuff out there guys i really love everything about this so if you learned something Hit the like button, leave me a comment, let me know, and we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.